Hey guys, it's Kim here and happy Chinese New Year. Well, it's not actually Chinese New Year yet. Uh, I've had to give away my 19th of uh, February slot to Flux Buddies. Um, but yeah, so this is Chinese New Year's Eve, I guess. Although um, actually Chinese New Year takes place for probably about 15 days, um, if not an entire month. Um, so plenty of days to celebrate, but Chinese actual New Year, 19th of February, and it is the year of the goat. Um, so I thought I'd play some Chinese New Year games, similar to uh, what I did for Valentine's Day. Um, so. We're going to kick things off with the God of Fortune. Uh, so use the mouse to control the man and control uh, catch the money dropped down by the God of Fortune. Be careful to not run into the ghosts of poverty or you will lose money. Um, I feel a bit odd. Oh my God. Um, he's moving fast. Moving. I, I can't get any money. I can't get any money. There we go. Oh, there we go. I got one. I got one. I got one money. So, so far, Chinese New Year. Oh, there's a... Oh, I, suppose, I suppose that's a... A, um... Ghost of Poverty. Uh, I'm not doing very well here. Um, it's quite hard to line up. He's very fast. He's, he's a very fast god. Um, and there's a lot of, uh, I guess, the Ghosts of Poverty. Uh, he's dropping traditional Chinese money there, the ones with the hole in the middle. That was where people could um, hold uh, like the money together on a bit of string. He's also dropping ingots there, um, which used to be a very f uh, popular form of money in older China. Um, also, one of the things you eat at Chinese New Year is um, dumplings that look like those. I think they're called Tianzi or something like that. Tianyu or so I can't remember what the Chinese name is. I just call them dumplings. Um, but ow! They, oh, the ghost stole my money, you little jerk. I'm doing really badly at this. Um, but yeah, the, uh, uh, dumplings sort of meant to look like ingots, so you eat them at Chinese New Year for prosperity. Uh, let's try that again, because I did appallingly then. Um, Traditionally, you're not really kind of like chasing after the god of prosperity for ingots and money. I, I'm doing so badly at this. I am so poor. Um, and yeah, you don't really have uh, ghosts of poverty pinching your money, but you do have red packets of money called Ang Bao's given out, and they're my favourite part of Chinese New Year. Well, I mean, no, obviously seeing my family is the favourite part of Chinese New Year, but yeah, Chinese people generally give out Ang Bao's for kind of uh, Chinese New Year, and also for kind of, ow, um, sort of big ceremonies like weddings, births, um, sometimes birthdays, that kind of thing, and also, um, uh, yeah, and uh, what it is is like it's a red packet of money and you can get some really beautiful red packets as well And um, yeah, it's just meant to set you up for the new year and traditionally well at least my mum does this you should really give out new notes um, I, This is really hard um, Yeah, so you'll see a lot of people going to the bank around this time of year to get new notes to hang out And generally it's married couples giving it to young kids Although my aunt is still not married so she has to get an pal from my mum And she, my mum is so like peed off that she has to still do this uh, okay, so we've got one just called just called Chinese New Year, and I think it's similar to the um, Valentine's monster dude um, Like monster creation thing and that it has nothing to do with Chinese New Year except that we're gonna dress up this girl this anime girl <laughs> as a, 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 a Chinese New Year person like um, so it's a little bit better this time because uh, I guess um, We can actually see the options. So I'm gonna go I'll go with that. It's a bit showy, bit bit showy there, young lady. I think you're showing a bit too much leg. The whole idea behind the Chung Sum is that it's not like kind of skimpy and you know it, it it's meant to be long and elegant with two slits up the side, so it kind of suggests you know what what you know what, what might lie beneath. That was quite similar, I guess. Uh, me, not really. Um, that's quite a traditional dress. I I'm gonna go with the red traditional red dress. Uh, hair pieces, chopsticks. Now, I hate it when people put chopsticks in their hair. It's not right. I, I mean, Chinese, it's not chopsticks they have, it's hairpins that they have in their hair, but the guys, they kind of look like chopsticks, but I hate it so much in this country when people go to, like, I don't know, fancy dress party or a chinese theme party, and they put chopsticks in their hair, because it's like putting a knife and fork in your hair. And would you do that? No, you wouldn't. So don't put chopsticks in your hair. It's disgusting. It's unsanitary. And it's gross. I'm gonna go with bells in my hair. Uh, ooh, dresses. Ooh, I like that one. That is styling. That looks like the more kind of traditional um, Chinese dress. I've seen many performances with this kind of dress and then they use like the long flowing sleeves as part of the dance. I like that one. That is very grand. Uh, eyeshadow. Mm, I guess I don't wanna put too much on. It's more about your outfit. Uh, here you go. Uh, mouth. Let's, let's have a little smile. Cheesy grin, been a bit cheeky. Uh, I think a big smile, big welcoming smile. 
footwear. Um, it's all rather impractical, isn't it? Uh, I mean, traditionally you'd probably wear like flat sandals like that, handmade with uh, uh, like embroidery of good fortune and stuff on them. Uh, I'm gonna go for these. Really, you can't really see them. They haven't thought that one through. Have they? You can't see it through. Uh, anyway, uh, footwear, skin tone. Been through that. Accessories. Fan. A good luck fan. Chinese, oh money, oh this is um, a Fu character which um, generally you see these on the front of people's doors at Chinese New Year, I've got one on the front of my door at the moment, and um, actually you hang it upside down um, because uh, the Chinese word for Dao uh, literally means upside down, although actually for Cantonese people if the Fu sign is hung upside down, Fu is also Dao when it's upside down, it means poor and it sounds like the word poor so you're pouring your luck away meaning bad luck for you so Cantonese communities tend not to hang the sign upside down but for everyone else they hang it upside down um, to invite kind of you know and it means blessings and happiness and you know to bring luck and prosperity and all that lovely stuff um, into the house so that's what um, that's what that's and that's why it's upside down as well um, so I don't know, I get a bit weird about because I live in a very English community uh, not very many Chinese people there so I get a bit worried that like, they think like I'm just being an idiot and just hanging up the wrong way around but no I mean to. Mandarins, very good for New Year if you hand out mandarins. Um, again, means good luck, you know, it's, it's good health and all that. And because we do a lot of house visits during Chinese New Year, um, mandarins, you tend to be kind of like, you know, just going around with nothing but mandarins and handing out mandarins. Uh, good quality ones too, so I'm going to go with the mandarins there. Uh, backgrounds, Ooh, I quite like that one, that one's nice. Um, yeah, let's go for that, that one, that one. So there we go. That's, um, that's my Chinese girl celebrating Chinese New Year. And you say, Gong Si Fa Chai, which means happy Chinese New Year. Gong Si Fa Chai. And then, oh, I think Cantonese is Gong He Fa Choi. Um, so it's a little bit different. Um, but yeah, so there you go. Gong Si Gong Si Gong Si Ni. Now, we're going to go to the fortune cookie because there's something I want to educate you about that might blow your mind about fortune cookies. So let's click on it first. Click on the fortune cookie to get my, you will be awarded some great honor. Just some. Great honor. Now here's a little fact for you. Fortune cookies, not Chinese. Actually invented in San Francisco, um, I can't remember what year, but in Chinatown in San Francisco, um, based on like a Chinese biscuit, uh, it's, I think I think it was the love uh, love uh, love letter biscuit, which is kind of like a thin, crispy pancake that gets imprinted with um, kind of a very pretty kind of pictures and characters that you give traditionally. It's like you know almost like Valentine's Day. You give it out to the one you love. Um, but yeah, this is this is not a Chinese invention. It's an American invention. That's why I hate them. I think they taste awful. Um, so yeah, don't go thinking this is Chinese. It's not. Uh, so next up we're going to play Mooncakes. Uh, Mooncakes is not a Chinese New Year thing, it's actually in, uh, to do with the Harvest Festival. So in a, the purpose of this game is to select the mooncakes in descending order of the number of egg yolks they have. Uh, press left arrow and down arrow. Okay. Uh, okay, two... So, what? Wait, no, oh, descending order, wasn't it? So, uh, down... There we go. Um, yeah, so... Mooncakes actually come from the Chinese Harvest Festival, literally called Mooncake Festival, um, and they are sort of like a really sweet um, yam-based uh, cake, pastry, very heavy, very sweet, very rich, and they'll have like a salted duck egg inside it, well you get different ones, um, but you know, you give them out at the Harvest Festival, so I'm not quite sure why we're playing a Chinese New Year game about it. Um, you may remember me kind of talking about it around uh, Harvest Festival last year. Um, but yeah, it's an autumn festival, also known as the Lantern Festival as well. So yeah, of course Chinese New Year, there is a lot of um, food that gets eaten at Chinese New Year. Oh my god, it's one of the best things. And all of it will symbolise something, like I told you earlier about the dumplings. Um, my favourite... Oh, game over. We won! We've moved on now to Mahjong. Mahjong being a tile matching game, so we're matching all these up. Another little fact for you, this again is not a Chinese invention. The game, the Chinese game of Mahjong is actually incredibly different to this. This again is, I think, an American invention um, by an American computer scientist who just basically took the tiles from Mahjong. So if you were to play actual Mahjong, um, it would, like the tiles do look like this. 
um, with the kind of seasons and dragons and winds. And then, um, so those are your special ones, like the winds. Uh, this is a dragon. This is a white dragon. This is a red dragon here. Um, and then you saw the spring and summer just there. So those are special tiles. And then you get the base tiles, almost like a pack of cards, kind of. So that's the bamboo hand. That's the circles hand. Um, oh, yeah, characters. Characters. I can't remember what the other one is. Um, but yeah, Mahjong in um, China, at least how I play it, is more like a gambling game, more like poker, um, in which that you have, you create uh, four walls. It's a four player game. Um, you create four walls with all these tiles. And then um, you have a hand, like you draw a hand of, oh, I think it's 13, 14 tiles from that. And what you're trying to do, like in poker, is basically construct the best hand that you can. And... Um, that's, that can be made from pairs, threes, or fours. Um, and generally, you play for point. It depends how advanced you're playing. You can play a very basic level. You can play advanced level. Um, but if you're trying to go for, like, one suite, so you'll try and, like, just have, like... Um, circles or bamboos or characters and then if you manage to get kind of fours out of the dragons and stuff like that that's extra points um, so when it comes to totting up the kind of money at the end of it um, that's the thing that you're going to need to pay attention to um, so yeah very different to this game so it's really funny because when I, I, I got my grandfather's mahjong set recently and I was saying to my friends let's play mahjong and they were like oh really and I was like no it's not it's not it's not mahjong like you think it is it's not the tile matching game it's actually a very addictive um, gambling game um, and certainly my auntie used to um, be part of a kind of a serious, uh, I don't want to say gambling ring because that sounds really sinister or weird, you know, um, serious. But like she'd have regular Mahjong games and they'd actually play for money. And I refused to play with her because she would just bankrupt me. She's so good at it because a lot of it is kind of bluffing and stuff like that and um, discarding tiles. Um, so every every hand you can discard a tile into the middle. And then obviously if someone else needs that tile, they pick it up, but they have to shout like I need a, you know, Pong if it's a four or a uh, Kong, uh, no, it's Kong, Pong, Mahjong. Mahjong, obviously, if you win the game, if you get, I think it's three threes and a four or pairs. I can't remember the exact, um, the exact, uh, circumstances that you need and also like poker there are various different rules that you can play to um, and I think I've just backed myself into a corner there so yeah mahjong this is American mahjong Chinese mahjong a lot more like poker um, and a lot more interesting a lot more fun and the idea is it's, it's meant to be fast paced and um, yeah you kind of uh, you keep it up and you keep a good pace to it so you, there's no kind of sitting around deliberating for ages um, those are flowers by the way um, yeah, so uh, so yeah, I'm a bit bit disappointed that this is the more popularly known one when it's essentially the wrong one. It's not right. It's not right. Um, six. Uh, although I am addicted to finishing this game, so we might be here sometime. So we're going to what's my sign now? Um, so you can find out what your uh, what your sign is and what that means. Um, so. We are in 2015, which means uh, this year it's actually going to be the year of the sheep, or as other people say, it's um, uh, it's the goat or the ram. Um, it's a bit confused, but basically, it's I think Chinese people say it's the goat, but everyone else says it's the sheep. But I don't really know what the difference is in all of that. Um, so uh, a little fact for you: if you were born in 1919, 1931, 1943, 1955, 1967, 1979, 1991, 2003, or 2015, then you are. This is your year. Rise, rise. Um, yeah. So um, if you believe the kind of Chinese astrology, so it's the eighth, uh, uh, the eighth animal in the Chinese zodiac. Um, the other 12 being, the other 11 being rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, goat, monkey, rooster, dog, and pig. Um, so yeah, it's generally thought that in this year, if you're year of the goat, uh, I'm just gonna read this out from another page I have open. People born in the year of the goat are generally believed to be gentle, mild-mannered, shy, stable, sympathetic, amicable, and bringing with a strong sense of kind-heartedness and justice. Um, they have, uh, tend to have delicate thoughts, strong creativity and perseverance and acquire professional skills well. Uh, although they look gentle on the surface, they are tough on the inside, always insisting on their own opinions in their minds. They have strong inner resilience and excellent defensive instincts. They prefer, pre they prefer to be in groups and they do not want to be centre of attention. 
Moving on now to the Chinese dragon game, ordering and sequencing numbers. Um, so, yeah, I'm not quite sure how this is going to work, but let's have a go. Oh, here we go. So we've got a Chinese dragon, and we've got to put the numbers in order. I think I got that right. No, no, five, get in place. Uh, so Chinese uh, dragons and lions, very much a big part of the celebrations. Um, one of my favourite things is actually uh, chi uh, lion dancers. And you'll see them, when I'm home in Malaysia, you just see them all over the place. It's like the busiest time ever. So they'll go over to places and um, they will do a dance um, to kind of usher in uh, luck um, into kind of... Um, uh, into homes and like sweep out the bad luck and bring in the new luck for the new year and um, certainly where I live like we have a kind of communal lion dance um, so I live in a block of flats so they come to the, the lobby of the area um, and it's a lot of fun it's a lot of noise and firecrackers and you know you can give the lion a little scratch on the head and yeah it's, it's a great thing to watch and my favorite bit is when um, they get uh, you can do this little bit um, where they get drunk so you give them an offering like a plate of um, oranges or mandarins um, of beer and money and stuff like that and the lion will kind of which obviously is a per there's a person inside the head of the lion um, will kind of drink the beer and then the whole lion will get drunk and fall over and fall asleep and then you have to try and wake him up um, with lots of noise and firecrackers and then he'll carry on with the dance and traditionally as well you have um, a, a bit of cabbage or um, Chinese leaf suspended high up and the a lion has to get up there so it's an incredible feat of acrobatics and noise uh, to welcome in good luck for the new year and also another thing you do for the new year is um, you uh, you have a massive spring clean beforehand like I'm talking huge spring clean because the idea is you're sweeping out the bad luck and the misfortune of last year and welcoming in the good luck for the new year and traditionally it was the time when kind of old debts were struck off and cancelled um, and uh, so like landlords you know would have to hurry up and chase their debts um you know from the from the previous year and you know that there's i think there's a very famous kind of um traveling theater performance of like a landlord chasing around his tenants who haven't paid him and want you know everything because the idea is you start a new year new slate you don't carry over any of the misfortune from last year you start fresh and it's all nice and good and groovy um, yeah, and of course it's, you know, it's a very big family event. In China you actually end up getting, I think, a week off because they always try and wrangle it so it's around the weekend. Um, so you get the kind of weekend off, but also you get, um, you know, three days either side. So you went, so I was out there in Shanghai and it was like, there was a public holiday for seven days, which was fantastic. And you hear fireworks going off everywhere and everyone's really happy and there's so much food, like an extraordinary amount of food. And um, there's like things that you're meant to do for 15 days. So every, like for, for the two weeks surrounding Chinese New Year there is things to do like celebrate the Jade Emperor's birthday and the God of Prosperity's birthday and there's different things you do on different days but essentially it kind of boils down to you celebrate with your family you, you, and, and then uh, once you've done the main celebration you go around and see other members of family so you have lots of snacks and treats and stuff like that uh, waiting around so that you know if you have last minute visitors you can uh, you can uh, oh dear I'm not going to do multiples while I'm trying to concentrate um but yeah, you can you can do that. Um, I, oh, I'm, uh, I, I, I'm stuffed. What I'm doing? That's right. Yes, there we go. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just distracted there for a second. Unfortunately, this year I've not managed to make it home for Chinese New Year. Last time I made it home was 2013, where I actually didn't tell my mum that I was. She was out there. She's um, so my parents are out there already with the rest of my family. Um, and I didn't tell my mum in 2013 that I was going home. I just told my aunt so she could come pick me up at the airport. And I flew out a couple of days before Chinese New Year and got there. And oh, it was amazing. Like she started crying. She didn't recognize me. She thought I was my aunt's friend at first. And then she, re when she realized what it was, uh, who I was, she just started crying and hitting me, which is a very my mum type thing to do. So that was amazing. Whoops. Um, and everything, everyone in the family was super surprised that I managed to make it out as well. Um, unfortunately this year, I'm not able to make it out. So it's it's just me in this country on my own, which sucks a bit because I'm getting quite homesick. And uh, but I'm trying to I'm trying to have some celebrations here. It's just a little bit more difficult in this country because obviously you don't have a week off and um, people don't understand it. Like with Christmas, it's sort of everywhere. Valentine's Day, it's sort of everywhere, and you can easily buy cards and you know the the food that you eat and the, and everyone just gets it. And there's celebrations and fireworks everywhere. But um, yeah, unfortunately, I'm just going to have to kind of have a low key. Um, 
low-key uh, celebration this year with a couple of friends, maybe do a little bit of food. I'm having to mix it up a little bit, so it's not quite going to be the food that you normally eat in uh, Malaysia uh, with your family and also, you know, perhaps not to Western tastes. Um, but I'm, I'm going to try and have a little steamboat here um, and uh, invite a couple of friends over. So that will be my celebrations for this year. So uh, everyone who's celebrating in Southeast Asia or anywhere else with a big Southeast Asian community, uh, let me know how your celebrations are getting on. Send me some pictures on Twitter, actually, because uh, I just love seeing people celebrating, you know, kind of big family events. Like, they're important, you know? And, um, yeah, so I think especially because I'm just, you know, suffering a bit from SAD this year and I'm on my own. And it's going to be a while before I see my mum and dad again because they're not coming back to the country for a while. Um, yeah, I'm just a, I'm a bit meh. Um, and yeah, it would just be nice to see a lion dance or something like that. I, I love the lion dances. They're so much fun. So much noise and colour. Um, but yeah, everyone else who wants to get involved in Chinese New Year, just eat lots, wear red, uh, and go around going gong si fat chai, you know, to everyone saying happy Chinese New Year. And if you really want, look up the song gong si. Gong si gong si gong si ni. I mentioned it earlier, but it's the song that gets played. So you know how in, in Western countries, when you get around Christmas, they all start playing like the Christmas songs and stuff like that, and it drives you insane. It's sort of like that. Um, but uh, like, it's, yeah, it's gong si ni. So look it up. It gets plays everywhere and it's really really irritating count in twos oh okay so um yeah it really gets on your nerves and my dad's already sent me a message going it's driving me crazy um and mom was saying he's humming it under his breath <laughs> so yeah if you want to celebrate chinese new Year, give each other oranges you know mandarins um and you know if you're feeling if if your parents give your children red packets of money it has to be even numbers of money uh because especially if you want to be lucky Eight numbers of eight, multiples of eight, because eight sounds like fat in uh, Chinese, which um, is also prosperity, uh, the word for prosperity. So th that's why you often see Chinese like love the number fat, fat, fat. You know, so license plates and stuff like that will sell for loads if it's eight, eight, eight. Um, right. So I've had enough of this game. I think I've run out of games on the other place. Um, so yeah, happy Chinese New Year, everybody. Enjoy it, eat lots, tell your family you love them, and yeah, have an awesome time. Gong si fat chai.